Thank you for tuning in to Mr. Cliff Toy Shop. On today's review, we take a look at the Storm Collectibles Street Fighter V Champion Edition E Honda. Today, I'll be reviewing this figure in the following categories Accessories, Articulation, Design, Is It Essential to Your Collection? functionality and price once all scores are totaled i give you my opinion if this figure is a pass or a purchase so man i'm pretty pumped to have this figure it was slated to release in november of 2020 and here we are all the way in april so for accessories ihonda comes with a nice amount of accessories but we'll get to that but shortly let's start with the head scopes we did three in total so looking at this one with the open mouth, it's probably one of my favorite out of the three. The paint is done clean. The eyes really look good. And I'm really digging how the man bun looks on the back of Honda's head. This originally was probably my least favorite. The more I see it, the more I'm coming around to it. I really do like, however, how in these face sculpts, Storm Collectibles continues to show the expression throughout. Up in the brow, the forehead, the cheek area, so I'm digging that. And for the third head, it is on the figure, which is probably my favorite, the neutral expression. I will probably use this one or perhaps that head scope if I'm going to display him. We get eight pair of hands, two which are fisted already on the figure. And Storm Collectibles typically does well with the hands. You see some line work, some vein work, and you see an area with the nail. I have all right so my camera shut off hopefully I didn't lose anything so just moving to the effect pieces and we sort of get what I think is the first of three parts to give that slapping effect and this is done in a not really a clear plastic plastic definitely has some color and it's not see-through so not completely transparent we do have two additional effect pieces done in a variation of colors. Usually Storm Collectibles is pretty spot on with their translucent plastic. And then you have the smaller effect piece, which I believe completes this three set. In addition, we have a stand, which is absolutely not for the figure. I am assuming that it plugs or ports in somewhere to assist with this effect. So overall, a good spread. Now, to where I will be deducting some points... Storm Collectibles did not give us that fast-moving hand movement that E-Honda does in the game. And if there was any company that could do it, Storm Collectibles is certainly capable of doing something like that. So very disappointed that we did not receive that effect piece. So for overall accessories, I will be giving Storm I will be giving E-Honda a 8 out of 10. So for articulation, I think this will be pretty solid. It is my first time playing around with the figure. So as far as the head, you're able to get him to look up about that much. He does look down, good rotation, some pivot, and you could say some back and forth. So with the arms, I typically pop them off, which I just did. Let's take a moment for me to fix that. All right, so back on. So with the arm, we're gonna say right about here. It does rotate a full 360. You do have an upper bicep cut. The elbow bends in about that much. I believe it's single jointed. Some of the muscular gets in the way. The wrist is on a ball peg, so you're able to get it to go in what direction you need it to. Also, he has butterfly joints bending forward that much, backwards about that much. So now with the torso, you do have the standard Storm Collectibles floating A and B portion. So just using the top, Nope, normally I focus on this, right? So moving forward, you don't get much crunch forward just using the top. Going back, not much. You do get a good amount of rotation. You get some pivot, not that much. Now using the combination of the two, the Honda is still not able to bend forward that much. He bends back pretty far. Using the two, you get good rotation. There's also rotation at the waist, and you get a little bit of pivot using both. Now, with the legs, this will be interesting. The legs, I don't want to pop them off. I do not want to put these legs back on. The leg is able to bend out about that much. It's able to go forward. Only a little, well, hold on, only a little. 
it goes back not that much you do have upper rotation next point of rotation is all the way can't even call it rotation so really no next point of rotation the knees are double jointed single bending in about that much so now with the foot it's able to go forward that much down that much oh, it's kind of stiff yeah I learned my lesson with that crane yeah, that's about all I'm gonna push it forward that much barely rotates on the outside and you get some okay rotation on the inside and the feet are also articulated and this joint is pretty stiff which is good so for overall articulation is decent you do get some range in a lot of areas but there's some limitation so with the torso for example you do get a lot of moving parts but there are some limitations to how far those parts can do uh, go with the legs you also get some moving parts but then there are some limitations so for overall articulation i'm going to give you a seven out of ten so for design the honda seems on the small end i'll learn more about that when i compare him to some street fighter figures so i just have a marvel legend standing close to me and yeah there is some considerable size difference i think this makes me realize how much bigger this character is so let's take a look at the big guy i really like how they made the body seem fattish however muscular and the best place to really look at that is if you look at the stomach and chest area to where you certainly can see some muscle tone and definition like even if you look at the stomach hair, it's rounded, but then there are some abs that sculpted on top of that cushion. And the face looks very good. I really like the man bun that's here. I like how the hair flows around too. And I really like just the definition of muscle. It really continues in the back, the arms, down to the feet. Look at those feet. And if you look underneath, it appears that you can remove this. I really don't want to remove this. Uh, we'll, we'll see once we get to the functionality part. And I think with Mataro, I noticed the nipples. So yes, Storm Collectibles actually sculpts nipples on their characters. And there's absolutely shading on this figure. If you look closely, and I don't even think you have to look closely, you can absolutely see the shading. And it's apparent throughout on this guy, something that I really like. And the paint apps for the most part are clean-ish. There are some areas to where either white or blue does bleed over. Usually you don't see that too often with Storm Collectibles. And one thing that I don't think a lot of people give Storm Collectibles credit for, if you look at the hinges in between, they're even painted. And if I'm not wrong, it seems to be some shadowing. That could be the light, however. But it is very uh, close to the flesh tone, which almost makes you able to ignore that big pen in between. So for overall design, I'm going to give you Honda an 8 out of 10. So is he Honda essential to your collection? There is absolutely no doubt about it. He's one of those core characters in Street Fighter 2. And while not having the importance as a Ryu and a Ken, I would say he still scores pretty high. He has also managed to remain relevant throughout all of these years, appearing in most, if not all, of the Street Fighter franchises. So as far as being essential to your collection, I'm going to give E-Honda a 7 out of 10. What a day. So I recorded this and for whatever reason it did not pick up sound. So the head pops on pretty easily. Now one of the things that I like uh, regarding functionality would be the soft upper torso piece. This is extremely pliable which allows him to move around. And also, you don't have to worry about this rubbing, as this is a very soft material, so it's not plastic on plastic. So, once again, let's display the hands that he comes with. So, you have two fisted, two crouching tiger, two don't make me smack you, and two how big is your hands. So, the hands go on rather easy, as the pegs are extremely large, which I love. All right, so I think this is the part of the video that I lost, so let's go back to the rest of the video. You can see he passes the stand test. He stands exceptionally well on his own. Okay, so since instructions aren't included, I had to look at the back of the box. 
So if you can see both sides, this area is flat, is nowhere on the back for you to mount this effect piece. If you look in the front, however, let's say this key here, and the reason I'm calling it a key because it matches this hole, just make sure that it's aligned properly. You will need to apply some pressure. Once you get it on, it's a pretty secure fit. All right, so that took a little bit longer than I wanted it to take. So once you get it on properly, it is pretty secure. Now, if you have it on properly, there will be enough space to where you can get this to mount on. And I don't know if this goes in a particular way. It seems like it does. But yeah, then that locks on as well. Now, Got to look closely, but at the bottom, there's a port to where you can use the stand. So let's get that opened. All right. So I got the stand with all of the smaller pole snapped in place. And I'm going to port this on like so. Hopefully this isn't too high. I think I have four in total. So yeah, four is probably too high, but just to give you an idea. There it is. Well, maybe I can. So it does look good, right? It, it really looks good. I'm happy that they included the stand to make it work. But I'm really missing those multiple hands. That would have been even better. So continuing on down with the figure. I wish we would, would have gotten more range in the legs with that knee. Also having... Well, see, this pivoting in pretty good right now. Out a little bit better. Maybe it loosened up. So maybe you want to boil these. I'm not. I kind of like my joints a little bit tight. So for functionality, the parts that come with E-Honda work exceptionally well. The hands are very easy to take on and off. The head is easy to pop off. And for the accessories, they actually work very well with the figure, which isn't always the case with Storm Collectibles. So for overall functionality, they did an overall good job with engineering. It's just some limitation in the range with this character. So for overall functionality, I'm giving Honda an 8 out of 10. So for pricing, Honda comes in at $90. That's before taxes. That's before shipping. I was able to get a discount on shipping, so I paid maybe a dollar for shipping for this figure. Add in taxes, about $9. So let's round this to $100. So is Honda worth the price of admission? Well, let's see what he comes with. So as far as accessories, we get a decent amount. We get three interchangeable head sculpts, which is always good. We get at least eight hands. And we receive an effect piece that actually works very well with the figure. As I already mentioned a number of times in this video, I am disappointed that we don't have that multiple hand slapping effect. For me, that's something that would have pushed this figure over. In hand, Ihonda feels a bit small. I don't know if... I'm just thinking that he's actually bigger than what he's supposed to be. But he doesn't feel like a big character. But he's priced like a big character. And right off the hills of reviewing Mataro, this one seems less than value than that one. So for overall pricing, I'm going to give e Honda an 8 out of 10. That should give e Honda an overall cliff score of 46 out of 60. So now is e Honda a pass or a purchase. He is an absolute purchase. I wish that Storm Collectible would hurry up and just complete the Street Fighter 2 lineup. At this point, we're only missing Blanca, Vega, Barlog, and Doslam. All right, so let's get Honda ready for some size comparisons. Only going to put two figures up here at a time. Okay, there he is. Let's start with... Marvel Legends Venom. Not sure if this Venom is going to stand. His legs are a little out of place. All right, there you go. Here he is next to the figure that's going to be around for some time. The Marvel Select hawk and the hawk is just enormous to e honda as he should be these are both 
seven inch scale figures, even though Storm Collectible says 112 on the packaging. There you go for a good side by side. All right, let's get Hulk out of the way. We're not gonna do too many comparisons today. Let's find a Street Fighter figure. So here he is next to Violent Ken. So I didn't buy the regular version of Street Fighter 2 Ken as I felt that this one really wasn't a good version of Violent Ken. The red was too red. So now that that figure is sold out, I actually want it. If anyone is selling for a decent price, even used, please hit me up. So you can see compared to another Street Fighter figure, yeah, he's not that big. I think E Honda is supposed to be a little, it's supposed to be bigger than this, but I could be wrong. So let's get Ken out of the way and let's add in Zangief, which is the largest Street Fighter figure I think I have. I'm pretty sure he's bigger than Alex. And I don't know, you let me know what you think. Should Zangief be this much taller than E Honda? I feel like the e Honda figure should have been a bit bigger. Not so much in mass. I think height would be better. But please drop a comment. Let me know if you feel that is off or accurate. I'm going to go ahead and conclude this video. Thank you for tuning in to Mr. Cliff's Toy Shop. And I hope to see you during the next review.